Welcome to God's house. No one likes facing challenges or trials in their life. We would prefer that life would always be easy and joyful, right? But at times, as we will see today, God allows tests and trials to come into our life for our benefit. And as we see in the life of Abraham, we are encouraged to face those trials and embrace those tests, knowing that the Lord will help us through them. This morning we'll be following the order of service called Morning Praise as it begins on page 45 in the front of the hymnal. And we join in our opening hymn, hymn 243. Please stand. O Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Let us worship Him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. 
Our first lesson for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in Proverbs chapter 9. Your wisdom is personified, and that wisdom is Christ, who invites us to receive nourishment for our souls. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her maids, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come in here, she says to those who lack judgment. Come, eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways, and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. This is the word of the Lord. We join in the psalm of the day, Psalm 1, as you find it on page 64 in the front of the red hymnal. Our second lesson is recorded in Ephesians chapter 5. There are only two paths that we can walk. Either we walk on the path of foolishness or we walk on the path of wisdom by walking with God. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. The Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in John chapter 6. 
Here Jesus continues with his bread of life discourse. And again, he encourages the people to receive the food which gives eternal benefits. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died. But he who feeds on this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We continue with the next hymn, hymn 452.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, there is never a convenient time for your vehicle to break down, is there? I mean, who enjoys sitting along the side of a highway waiting for the tow truck to show up? Who likes spending time and money at the mechanics? No one does, obviously. But have you ever wondered why we don't spend more time there? I mean, the average car has 1,800 parts, including the engine, the tires, and the the spark plugs. It's amazing that the complex machine doesn't break down more often. Almost every day we can go out there and with the simple flick of the wrist or push of the button, it starts right up, even on a day when the temperature is below zero. So how have vehicles become so reliable? Well, after years of intense testing. Car companies put their vehicles through all kinds of tests so that they can offer a more reliable product in order to keep you a loyal customer. Well, today as we follow Abraham on his journey of faith, we're going to see how God also put him through some vigorous testing. God didn't do this to see if Abraham had faith or not because God knows all things. Rather, with this test, God was refining Abraham's faith so that it would run even more reliably. And since God doesn't want our faith to sputter out halfway to heaven, He also puts us through vigorous tests. And So this morning, I want to encourage you to embrace those tests as Abraham did. About a year after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, which we heard in last week's sermon text, Sarah gave birth to a son and named him Isaac. Finally, after 25 years, God had kept his promise. Well, the 100-year-old Abraham must have adored his son, not simply because he enjoyed kids, but because this son was his connection to the promised Savior. And that is why the test that God had in mind for Abraham was no simple matter. It began one day when God called for Abraham. And without hesitation, Abraham replied and said, Here I am, Lord. Although Abraham may have been taking care of some business or his flocks, he stopped whatever he was doing and he gave his full attention to the Lord. So are you following in Abraham's footsteps? When God comes calling in the person of your pastor or your fellow believers, do you give them your full attention? Or does their call seem like an intrusion on your life? Well, it will feel that way if we lose sight of what our real purpose is here on this earth. It isn't to to build up a comfortable life for ourselves. Rather, it's to build up our faith as we travel towards heaven. So when God comes calling, give Him your full attention because He comes to offer you help and encouragement. So what did God want from Abraham? Well, not much. He just asked Abraham to take his son Isaac and offer him as a sacrifice. Now, if Abraham would have gone through with that command from God, it would have put the promise of the Savior in jeopardy. So it's amazing that we don't hear any objections from Abraham. And we would we would at least expect him to say, "Can you repeat that, Lord?" It sounded to me like you said you want me to sacrifice my son Isaac, but I probably heard you wrong. No, instead, we're told he simply got up early the next morning, saddled his donkey, gathered some wood for the offering, and then got his son and two of his servants and set out on the journey towards a place called Moriah. Abraham did not hesitate to obey the Lord. 
And we shouldn't think that this was just a knee-jerk reaction, that Abraham was obeying the Lord before he really thought everything through. No, he had the entire night to think about this. And the journey itself took three days. And yet he remained dedicated to God's command to sacrifice his son. That kind of dedication just boggles our minds. When our parents or our our teachers or our bosses ask us to do something, we often want them to explain why, right? So when mom tells her son to clean up his room, the response is often, right now? How come? Rather than saying, yes, mom, I'll get right at that. Well, when God says to us, give me your first fruits, give me the best of your income, do we, do we respond by hesitating and saying, well, Lord, I'm not rich, or I'm just starting out, or I only get a few dollars for my allowance, and as a result, we give God only the leftovers. That's not dedication to God's will. And so he sends trials our way to refine our faith in him. And he will put us in situations where we are forced to rely on his mercy and to hold on to his promises. And he will lead us to see that holding on to his promises is not a bad way to live our lives here on this earth. As Abraham Abraham himself found out firsthand. So what was going through Abraham's mind as he went on this journey to Moriah? How could he possibly embrace this test that God had placed before him? Well, the New Testament book of Hebrews gives us some insight into what Abraham was thinking at that time. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. Did you catch why Abraham could embrace this trial? He reasoned that even if he had burnt his son to ashes, that God would have to raise him back to life. Why? Well, Because God had made it clear that the Savior would come through Isaac. And since Abraham knew that God keeps all of his promises, he knew that he would keep this promise as well. And we hear Abraham express his faith as he tells his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. And Abraham's trust in the Lord was not misplaced. When he and Isaac got to the top of Mount Moriah, he bound Isaac and placed him on the altar. And then he actually had the knife in his hand ready to kill his son. When the angel of the Lord intervened, and stopped Abraham. Now we've already met this angel, the Lord, in our sermon series this summer. This was not a created angel because he explained that Isaac had been meant as a sacrifice for him. He said, now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. No created angel would accept worship that was meant for God alone. Now, not only did that angel of the Lord stop Abraham from killing his son, but he also offered a substitute. We're told Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. Can you imagine the the flood of relief that must have washed over Isaac? as he watched the throat of that ram being slit, as he watched the flesh of that ram being burnt up on the altar. 
That knife and that fire was meant for him. Well, we should have that same feeling of relief every time we think about Jesus' death on the cross. That death took place just a a stone's throw away from where Abraham and Isaac were standing on Mount Moriah. And there God did what he would not allow Abraham to do. He sacrificed his son. And that is good news for us. Because no matter how hard we try, we never put our faith in the Lord with complete obedience. No, instead we argue that the things God asks us to do, well, they're out of date with what is going on in the world today. Or it wouldn't be financially wise for us to do those things. Or if we actually did what God tells us to do, then my life would be much more difficult. So what should God do with such arrogance on our part? How should he treat his creatures who question him, the creator? Well, he should destroy us. But instead, he saves us. As the ram took Isaac's place on the altar of Moriah, so Jesus took our place on the cross of Calvary and suffered God's wrath for our sins. Now Abraham would name that place the Lord will provide. It's an echo of something that Abraham said to Isaac as they were climbing up Mount Moriah. Isaac had asked his father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham simply replied, the Lord will provide. And it's what God has promised to do for you as well. To always provide for you. The Apostle Paul in Romans says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Remember that when he sends a test your way. If that test is an illness, he will give you the strength you need each day until he calls you home. If that test is financial, he will help you learn that you don't need every streaming app for your television or you don't need your Dunkins every day. Or if that test is an insult from someone else, You can learn to surrender your anger to the one who hands out justice perfectly. Now, remember that God also sends you tests not only for your benefit, but also for the benefit of other people. And wasn't that that true of Abraham's test of faith as well? Wasn't it really meant for our benefit more so than, than his? God used Abraham as a living example of how his commands can be fully obeyed even when they don't seem to make much sense to us. So when a test or a trial comes your way, consider how God is giving you an opportunity to demonstrate to others how believers handle difficulty. They do so with a God-given peace that surpasses all understanding. And through this demonstration of God's grace in your life, others may be led to want to know more about this God whom you worship and trust. So yes, embrace the tests and the trials that God sends your way. Embrace them because He sends them your way because they are meant for your good. If he didn't care about you, he wouldn't bother to refine your faith. Just as some coaches don't bother working on the skills of players who they know will never see any playing time. And when a fellow believer is going through a trial, do all you can to encourage them by pointing them to Jesus. If God did not withhold his only son, should we withhold anything from the Lord? We can surrender all things to Him. Our will, our grudges, our pride, our time, our talents, and our treasures. We can surrender it all to Him. We can lose it all. 
We can give it all up because in Christ, we actually won't lose a thing. In Jesus, we have everything we need, not only for this life, but for the next. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all our understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in confessing our faith by singing, We Praise You, O God. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. O Heavenly Father, we confess we have often failed to prepare ourselves for fighting the good fight of faith. We have often failed to make your love for us the motivating force in our lives. We have neglected your holy word through which you make our faith live and grow. 
Time and again we have failed to carry out the good intentions of our new man, obeying instead the evil desires of our flesh. But though we have often sinned against you, nevertheless you are full of mercy, O Heavenly Father. Forgive the sins and preserve the faith of your children, whom you have redeemed at great cost with the blood of your Son. O Jesus, precious Savior, we thank you for that sure promise of a crown of life for all who persevere in their trust in you and do not fall before the assaults of the devil, world, and flesh. Impart your gift of the Holy Spirit to each of us, that he may strengthen us and arm us to do battle with these evil forces and to win. May we lose neither our faith nor our eternal salvation. O Holy Spirit, make us ever mindful of our enemy Satan, who with great cunning and treachery seeks to put to death the new man in us. Help us to overcome Satan through your word, as did our Lord Jesus Christ, and remain steadfast in our faith. Give us wisdom to know when we are being tempted and grace to keep from sinning. Do not allow us to be influenced by the moral pollution that surrounds us in this wicked world. Help us make the treasures of heaven the treasures of our souls so that we may set our minds on things above where Christ dwells in glory. As you direct us heavenward to Christ, equip us to serve him all our days. May our new man delight to obey our Savior's every word and put to death the lusts of our flesh. Cause us to grow in wisdom, in faith, and in righteousness through your word until, we, until finally we lay hold of eternal life. And finally, dear Lord of creation, we ask that you would watch over and protect all those who are in the path of Hurricane Henri or will be feeling the effects of this storm. If it is your will, Prevent the loss of life and property. As we face this trial, lead us to lean on you, on your mercy and your promises, and help us to reflect your love by offering help and aid to those who need it. All this we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with our next hymn, Hymn 462. Please stand for prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord.
Let us praise the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated. Good morning once again. We're glad that you could worship with us this morning. Thank you to all who helped with our service today. We appreciate that. Um, one announcement is that hopefully this fall, uh, the second Sunday of September, we will be, I know we will be starting Bible class in Sunday school, but we are hoping to have a little bit of a coffee hour as well. Uh, right now we're going to plan to not offer food, but just drinks at that time. Um, so there is a sign-up sheet outside the uh, church office on the bulletin board if you're interested in helping with that. Um, God willing, we'll be able to continue to have the beverages and maybe add snacks as well, but right now we're, we're going to be cautious as things continue to rise in our uh, communities around us with the, the COVID. So we, the main thing is that we continue to be able to meet together for Bible class and Sunday school. Uh, the snacks are nice to have, but uh, hopefully we will be able to uh, have those once again. Um, and then I, I pray that no one will be negatively impacted by uh, the hurricane that is uh, coming our way. Um, if you need any help, please don't hesitate to reach out or don't hesitate also to check in on each other uh, to make sure that everyone is doing okay. So if you need any help, please uh, let me know and we will do uh, whatever we can to assist you. And, we pray that we just get some rain, right? And that's about it. But uh, we will see what the Lord has in store for us over the next few days. At this time, uh, Lori Markowitz would like to make an announcement uh, to the congregation. Lori, if you want to come up, I will get you a microphone so they can hear at home as well. It's more for those at home who are listening online. Hello. <laughs> uh, 
Good morning. I just wanted to make a quick announcement. Um, next Sunday after church, August 29th, Lois, Chris, and myself, we're just asking the ladies to stay for about 15 or 20 minutes afterwards. Um, and just a little of your time to share some ideas we have. You know, God willing, as after pastor said, um, we have for Sisters in Faith um, this coming year. And again, it's, you know, God willing that we'll be able to. Um, this includes our LWMS fall rally that's coming up and uh, the pastor's conference. So we just wanted to get some of your thoughts about some of our ideas, if we can, can do them. And uh, so thank you.